Welcome back, everyone. Our next speaker is Blessing Malumi. The title of a talk is My Journey into Artificial Intelligence. So please help me welcome Blessing. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm so excited to be here today. It took a lot of work and effort to be here, especially for my country, Nigeria, because it's kind of difficult getting a visa to South Africa, but eventually I was able to make it. And thank the organizers for the support through the whole process, for the help that they provided, especially Neil and Ewan and Simon. They've been amazing. Please, can you give them a round of applause? <laughs> My name is Blessing Oluwashiun Malumi. Oluwashiun is my Yoruba name. It means thank God. I am a software developer at Venture Garden Group, and I write codes that help provide transparency in different sectors of the economy. It helps provide reliability. It helps provide sustainability. So when you're looking at solving corruption in the country or in the world, I write codes that help solve that, that helps provide transparency. So when you're moving money from one place to the other, is there's an automation. Nobody is keeping money in cash, and it's moving from one place to the other. So this is what, that's what I do as a developer. I'm from Nigeria. I, I'm based in Lagos. I'm from Undo State. So AI means many things to different people. It means some, for some people, it means innovation. For some people, it means creativity. But for me, it means innovation. I grew up in the suburban of Lagos, Nigeria. I was I'm the first born twin of six children. My twin has always been like the most creative one amongst all my siblings. And I was the mathematician and the artist. I always wanted to be creative like my twin sister. I wanted to be able to have creative ideas that would change the world. So one morning, I woke up and I told God that I would like to have one, just one creative idea that would change the world. And there it was, the world's smartest machine. I dreamt about it, it was amazing. It was really, really impressive to me. I knew what the machine was going to be able to do. The machine was going to be able to automatically create outfits for people. When you input the measurement of the individual, when you, put, when you feed it the right materials to make the outfit, the end result would be the outfit. It sounded impossible. I was really young then. I didn't know what I was thinking, but it sounded like something really interesting to me. And that's what brings me to my interest. I'm interested in technology. I'm interested in fashion, that's why I look quite different from every, everybody here. Okay? I'm interested in teaching. I love teaching kids, I love teaching people. I'm also very passionate about women inclusiveness in tech. So many times you see me encouraging young women everywhere I find myself to be the best they can be, to be embrace technology because I know in many parts of the world, the male figures are always more embracing of technology compared to the females. So in my own space, I try as much as possible to encourage ladies by teaching them, by volunteering to help them learn how to program, and volunteering to help them to be the best that they can be. I would like to take you through my journey through artificial intelligence. I'd like to take you through my le the lessons I learned. I'm still learning. I'm not yet an expert, but I feel, I believe that this is an opportunity and a platform for me to share my story. I'd like to take you through how I started, where I am now, my big dream, and, I, and all the lessons that will be, you would find really interesting. One of the most important lessons for me in my journey was finding a mentor. That was what brought me into where I am today. If I didn't have a mentor, I don't know if I would be on this platform today. I don't know if I, I would have known Python programming. 
I would like to talk about one person that made a remarkable impact in my life, Dr. Tunde Adegola. He was my lecturer back then in school. He was a visiting lecturer. I schooled in the University of Lagos, Nigeria. And then I was first introduced to artificial intelligence by my lecturer in school. Knowing fully well that I had no idea of what artificial intelligence was, it was a very new topic. My lecturer encouraged me. He came to class and made it look so simple. He taught the basics. He explained, reiterating over and over again the definition of artificial intelligence. I can still remember what he gave as a definition, right since from school. He said artificial intelligence was the way of widening the range of things a computer can do. We all know that computers can make calculations. Computers can do your normal math, can do word processing. But now, we are able to widen the range of computer, what computers can do to, be able to enable them to be able to make decisions like human beings, make visualize things, you know, image classification, computer vision, so many things, diagnose diseases. That is what artificial intelligence is about. And that's how it was able to break down the concepts to me in so many, in a very simple way. While I was in school, my lecturer helped me through the whole process. He was very attentive to me in class, ensured that as I asked questions, he was always willing to answer me. And then, as I, as I, as I grew, as I grew older, as I went on to school, I knew that if I wanted to go far in life, I needed a mentor. So I had to look out for qualities that makes a good mentor. I had to look out for quality, so I went and do, I did my research, and from Forbes magazine, I was able to find out some of these qualities. Trust. How to find a good mentor. You must be able to trust someone. A good mentor must be someone you can trust to share your struggles with. A good mentor must be someone that you're compatible with in terms of your interests, in terms of what you're passionate about. You can't be looking for a mentor in fashion if you're not interested in fashion. A good mentor must be someone that's device. What I mean by device is the person must be able to think, must be outside your comfort zone, you know. And a good mentor must be, must, must be, must be, ex, must be an expert, must be able to demonstrate expertise. You can't find a mentor that is just a novice just like you. You wouldn't learn anything. So I looked at these qualities, and I found that quality in my mentor, Dr. Tundri Adegbola. So after graduate school, after graduating from the university, I reached out to my mentor. I sent him an email, you know, because I knew that I wanted to go far in life. I wanted to be the best I can be. And I told him, I, I, I told him how I was really impacted by his lectures in school, how I really appreciated the help he gave me while I was in school, and how great a lecturer that he was. And you know, Dr. Tuli Adigwala, as interesting and amiable as he was, he responded to my mail, and he told me that he thought I was a very fantastic student, that he was going to help me, ask me about my plans. And I told him I wanted to be an AI expert, that I wanted to know so much about it, even though I didn't know what an AI expert was. I, just like, I, I liked the word I'd done my research. So I told him I wanted to be an AI expert, and because he had made notable impact in the AI field, is one of the person that actually converted the Microsoft Word to the Yoruba language, because I'm, I'm a Yoruba girl. So that was really, really amazing for him. And he also has a company that is into la natural language processing, OCI. So I saw those qualities. I saw that he was an expert in the field. And I reached out, and he was like, he was going to help me through the process. And that was when he introduced me to the Python programming language. I fell in love <coughs> with Python through my mentor, Dr. Tunde Adigwala. Dr. Tunde Adigwala told me that if I wanted to be an expert in AI, I have to first of all learn the Python language. And he shared this link with me on YouTube, learning Python programming in six hours. <laughs> that was interesting. I was like, wow, really? So I could learn a language in six hours, really? A complex language? I couldn't believe it myself until I went to YouTube and I saw the video, and as I kept watching, I found out that Python was so simple. 
It was so easy to learn, very, very easy. And at the end of the day, I was able to make an English spell checker by watching the video and through his guidance as well. Because of course, I made some mistakes. I didn't really make some mistakes in my in my code. And this is where I bring us to the benefits of the relationship. So my my interacting with my mentor, I was able to first of all program learn Python programming. And through that, I also went on to Code Academy to learn more about Python. And then I was able to build an English spell checker. How did I maintain the relationship? I kept in touch with him. You know, sh I shared some of my struggles. Whenever I was, whenever I made mistakes, I shared it with him. I told him that I was having challenges with this particular code, and he was always willing to assist me in so many ways. Now, the next important lesson for me was intentional growth. How would I call intentional growth? Intentional growth is when you've learned something, you need to be able to make a plan to improve your knowledge, to become better at what you do, and you have to be intentional about it. I knew my goal, I knew my dream, I had a dream in mind, but I knew that, that before I would be able to get there, I had to have a plan, and not just a plan, a well-structured plan. And I decided to develop a growth strategy. My growth strategy was a top-down approach, research and my customized learning. So what do I mean by my top-down approach? The top-down approach that I, I, I this, my top-down approach strategy was starting to learn the complexity of artificial intelligence before learning to build the models, before learning how the models would work. And I learned this strategy through Nurture.ai. You know, that was my first interaction with Nurture.ai because in Lagos, where I live, I learned about the AI Saturdays through attending meetups. And I was like, oh, I am so interested in artificial intelligence. I want to know more, so much about AI. And I started attending the classes. And through attending the classes, I was able to strategize and be able to identify what my growth strategy would be, which was a top-down approach. Because not just that AI helps you to learn AI using the top-down approach. So my first two classes in Nurture.ai, I was able to use an image classifier. I was able to build an image classifier. It was exciting for me. You know, I didn't know what, how, to, I didn't even know. It was a very complex code, but I could see that my code was able to classify images. And that was amazing. That was an amazing milestone for me because it showed me that I could see the effect and the product of artificial intelligence. I could work with it. I could build something with it, even though I didn't understand how it was built. And that was true, that top-down approach. Over time, while attending the class, I was able to learn how those image classifier models were built. So that was my first strategy in learning AI. My next strategy was research. So I went online to do my research on what artificial intelligence was about. I went online to learn more how I could apply artificial intelligence to different areas, to different places, to different sectors of the economy. And then my next approach was customized learning. So I knew that I, would, I, need to, I needed to measure my progress, to measure my, my growth as an AI expert. So this was a top-down approach, and this was like an image classifier, which I was able to build as my project using the top-down strategy. Then the customized learning. While doing my research, I came across a site by Analytics Video. You know, during my research, I learned that if I wanted to be an AI expert, I needed to know so much about data science and machine learning. So I was reading blogs, I was attending meetups, and I found this site really interesting, Analytics Video. And on that particular site, there was a particular learning path for a data scientist. So I knew, that I, I knew that I needed to focus on being a data scientist, on knowing how to be an expert in data science, being an expert data scientist, you know, and being the best before I can also be an AI expert. Because I needed the knowledge of data science and knowledge of machine learning to be able to apply those two concepts to artificial intelligence. And this was what I came up with. 
So I got excited with getting started. And in my getting started, I had to learn what data science was about, where I could apply it, you know, and different other things. And then next, I had to learn about mathematics and statistics. Yes, I did mathematics in school, but I needed to know deep, more deeply about mathematics and statistics, like learning linear, linear, um, okay, linear models, you know, and then I had to choose my tool, Python, for data science. I had to choose my tool, Python, because there are different tools used in data science. There's the R tool, there's the Python tool, so I had to learn Python for data science. And then every month, which is not what I thought I included here, there was I had like a I had a strategy like what I needed to learn in each month. So from January to February, I focused on knowing more about data science. Then from March to June, I started learning mathematics and statistics, mean, median, mode, you know, standard deviation, linear regression, linear transformation, matrix, matrix transformation, and the likes. And then from June, July to August, I chose my Python tool, and I went online. I, I looked at courses on Udacity, Udemy, Coursera, and I learned how to use Python for data science. Right now, I'm at the point of basic and advanced machine learning tools. So progressively, I have been able to increase my knowledge in data science by following a strategic learning path. I couldn't just learn just in bits and pieces. I had to sit down and plan my learning and my growth and what, I, what milestones I needed to accomplish in each month. So for, I could say that in the past nine months, 10 months, I've, been, I've progressively increased my knowledge as an AI expert, especially in data science. During my learning path, these are some of the useful tools that I discovered in Python, pandas, NumPy, Skype, Beautiful Soup, and Tweepy. I used Beautiful, Beautiful Soup for building a web scraper, and I used Tweepy. Tweepy was the first tool that I started working with when I was learning, and I was able to use Tweepy to make my first Twitter bot. So my Twitter bot could actually post content for you on Twitter by itself using the Twitter APIs was able to put content for you. So it was automated, could interact with the APIs, and at scheduled times, it would be able to put, I will retweet your content, and then there was a particular one I built that could scramble images that you post on Twitter. And then I had to learn pandas for data science, working with data frames. I had to learn NumPy, and I found these tools really, really helpful in my journey and learning of data science. Now, back to the third most important lesson in my journey into AI, giving back. Initially, when I started my story, I said I, my major interest is tech, fashion, and teaching. Because I was able to discover my interest as someone that has teaching, being able to educate people, I knew that I had to give back to people who are not as knowledgeable as I was. I knew that I had to also help people learn this new understanding that I had just gotten. I could describe myself as a maven. A maven is someone that is always willing to share information that you just got. So when I got to know the usefulness of Python and how easy a tool that it was, how easy a tool that it was, I couldn't wait to hear, share my knowledge with people. So I looked out for platforms where I could share my knowledge of Python. And some of those platforms where I, I discovered was Django Girls Abuja, Visiola Foundation Coding Workshop, Relearn, CC Hub, Tin Code Africa. These are some of the pictures I took while I was volunteering because I was always very passionate about giving back, sharing knowledge. Sorry, please excuse me. So I learned that for you to be able to learn more, you must be able to teach others. Sometimes teaching others would mean you learning more about the subject. 
And that was exactly what happened to me while I was teaching others Python and knowledge I'd gained in Python. I would like to take you to a story of some of the people I taught while doing my journey. Shade. So Shade is a 14 year, an 18 year old girl. She was sweet spirited, very curious mind. When I met her, she signed up to attend the Django Girls event that took place in Abuja, where I volunteered to coach. She wasn't just one of the people I coached. She was among several others. But her story is really peculiar to me because she was willing to go the extra mile to learn new things. She expressed a lot of interest in learning Python programming. <coughs> she asked a lot of questions. And while we were discussing and learning, she told me she wanted to build a fashion blog site by the end of our learning during, during the Django Girls event. I was impressed. I was like, wow, you don't know anything about Python program. Now you want to build a fashion blog? Wow, that was really impressive for me. And I decided to guide her through the whole process. She learned about Django admins for administering her sites. She learned about Python, the basics of Python programming. And by the end of the coaching section, she was able to build a functional blog, fashion blog site, which was amazing. For someone that never knew anything about Python programming, I was able to build a fashion blog site by the end of a Django event. That was amazing. And to me, it made a lot of difference to me. I felt accomplished that I had done my work in giving back, in helping her learn the little I had known about Django, Django and Python. My second incredible story is the story of Adam. Adam was the youngest intern, a 14-year-old intern, very young boy. In Nigeria, I would like to say that not many children know how to program, but we try as much as possible to encourage and teach kids how to program because we are moving into being a developed country. So Adam was the youngest intern. Because of that, my organization tries to embrace young people. My organization, Venture Garden Group, they tried to encourage young students to come intern with us. So Adam was the first youngest intern that was assigned to me as a mentee. Adam's story is really peculiar because he was very curious and he knew what he wanted. He wanted to be a game developer at that age. And I was amazed when he told me that he wanted to be a game developer. So while, when he was assigned to me, I had to trust, review his knowledge of what he already knew to be able to create a learning curriculum for him that would help him to achieve his goal. So by, after the, after the, by the result of the test, I was able to design a curriculum in Python that taught him data types in Python, that taught him variables, that taught him functions, that taught him loops, that taught him classes. And by the end of two, his two months internship, he was very comfortable with the Python programming language. And he was able to build a console game because he loved to play games. So his game was able to request input from the user, request, provide input from the user, and request a response from the user via the keyboard. That was really, really amazing. Other platforms that I volunteered to give back was the Teen Code Africa organized by Andela in Nigeria. Relearn CC Hub. Relearn CC Hub helps young children from the ages of eight to about 14 learn, Python, learn programming. So they, they learn things like Scratch, which is a visual programming tool. They learn things like Python for a 14-year-old. And to me, Relearn was a platform for me to teach young children how to code. Then the Vishala Foundation Coding Boot Camps was tailored towards girls, girls 
embracing technology. And because of my passion for women inclusiveness in tech, I also volunteered to be a facilitator. And I taught the young ladies their Python programming. And many of them were able to work with the language. Another platform where I gave back was Django Girls Abuja. Because of my, my same interest for giving back, for teaching, for educating, for uh, helping people embrace technology, I volunteered on that particular platform and I was able to teach them programming. My big dream. My big dream of AI is to be able to create innovative solutions, AI solutions that would solve many problems in the world, especially in Nigeria, applicable to health, the education sector, <coughs> and the finance sector. That's my big dream of AI. I want to be able to create products of artificial intelligence by the end of my career as an AI expert. Not just have the knowledge, I want to be able to research on existing models, machine learning models, like neural network and the likes. I want to be able to refine and contribute to models that have already been created by experts in the field and be able to refine them as well. That's my big dream. Conclusion. I want to thank everyone for listening to my, to my speech and my talk. And if there's any question you could ask, please feel free to ask. If you could connect with me on at blessingmalmi at gmail.com, and that's my number over there. And then on Twitter, I'm blessing underscore malumi. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Blessing, for sharing your very interesting story with us. Are there any questions for Blessing? Uh, thank you. Um, that was very inspiring. I wanted to know, um, the lady who was able to make the fashion site, where's that fashion site now? Like, is she using it? What's happening there? Okay. Right now, she has a fashion. She was only able to put, put it on our system, but we are still communicating on how we could deploy it on pythonanywhere.com. So because we know that after the class, they're supposed to be able to to publish it on Python anywhere at the end of a Django event. But well, she has not done that yet, but she's on the process of doing that because it was just a recent thing that we just did. But she's going to do that. I'm talking to her and inspiring her, and I'm sure she will do that. Let me ask Any her. question? Yeah. Let me ask a quick, quick question to you then. Um, what do you think are the main obstacles to AI in okay. Africa? Like, is it compute? Is it skills, knowledge? Um. Okay. Okay, for me, in my own opinion, I think one of the major obstacles to AI is, I wouldn't say skills, because AI is just coming into Africa, but we are working on providing knowledge that will help people to be skilled. And then compute is also one of our major obstacles because we don't have many of the required resources to be able to run some of these models. Many times we have to run our applications on cloud, which is much more convenient for us by using Google Cloud Platform, by using Microsoft Azure, by using Colab. And that's because we, don't have, we do not have many of these compute resources, but I'm grateful and I'm excited that everybody in the world is collaborating and providing some of these platforms and making it accessible to many people in Africa, especially Udacity. I also learned, I learned artificial intelligence also and data science on Udacity. I was given a scholarship and I was, it was impressive for me. And that was some of the things that helped me in my learning 
So I like the fact that there's a collaborative effort to, to invade and contribute knowledge to everybody, making the knowledge of artificial intelligence accessible to everybody. Any, Is there any, any other questions? Hi, um, yeah, thanks for the talk. Um, it's not so much a question as much as a comment and maybe a piece of advice okay. for somebody like venturing into AI and machine learning. Um, often we find ourselves in the field or in general chasing state of the art performance for a specific, um, um, in a specific subset of the, of the field. Um, and we use that as a measurement of success. But um, I think maybe you getting into the field um, I noticed one thing in your presentation that um, your your drive is for social social good and to uh, upskill other people and um, I think just don't lose that as a measurement of success as well okay. when you when you uh, get further into the field. It's not always about chasing uh, state of the art performance, but also about the impact you can have with the using AI and machine learning as a tool for that. Okay. Thank you for that. Any other? Hi. Um, wow, this is loud. Um, thank you for your presentation. Um, you speak a lot about uh, women in tech, and as a fellow woman in tech, I feel like a lot of the responsibility um, for women in tech lies on us. Um, I was just interested to know what you think um, can be done more outside of just the women in tech pushing an agenda for other women. Okay. If I get your question correctly, do you want, like, do you want to know what we can do as women to push women in tech? Is that what you mean? Um, not exactly. Um, I think that what I was trying to say is that the responsibility usually lies with women in the Definitely. industry. Um, and what, outside of just women doing it, like what can, I suppose, men do more okay. to help um, I like that gender? question. <laughs> okay, I like that particular question. So for me, I think men can help women, mentor women, help women to believe in themselves. Because I feel that many women are very conscious and always afraid to speak up. There's a particular term for that word, but they don't always like to show that they can do something in the field. They have an imposter syndrome. Women are, are very, very prone to imposter syndrome. And what is imposter syndrome? Imposter syndrome is when you feel that you're not capable of doing something. So if men can be able to recognize that this is one of our major challenge as ladies, they will be able to help them to believe in themselves. Even when women say, oh, I can't do this. This is difficult. I, want, I believe men can be able to say, no, you can do it, and encourage them. Not impose on them, but encourage them, helping them believe in themselves by using encouraging words, by also giving them tax. And I also feel that sometimes men always like to take over responsibilities because they feel that women are not capable of handling it as well. So I believe that men should also, should also allow women to be able to take charge when given responsibility and not just take over the assignments from them as well. That way, women too will be able to believe in themselves and be able to do better in the women in technology, as women in technology. <laughs> Any other questions? Thank you. Any other questions? If not, let's give blessing a round of applause. <laughs>